राइट फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू मेन इवेंट्स फॉर ट्वेंटी फर्स्ट वीक फ्रॉम ट्वेंटी थर्ड मे टू ट्वेंटी नाइन्थ मे एंड द फर्स्ट एंड द फोर मोस्ट इवेंट इज टू इयर्स ऑफ द प्रेजेंट नरेंद्र मोदी गवर्नमेंट एंड आई वुड लाइक टू लिस्ट आउट सर्टन अचीवमेंट्स एज एन लिस्टेड बाय द गवर्नमेंट इन दिस कनेक्शन देन प्राइम मिनिस्टर्स विजिट टू इरान फिफ्टीन ईयर्स आफ्टर अटल बिहारी वाजपेयी विजिटेड इन टू थाउजेंड वन and we are going to look at the significance of the visit of narendra modi to iran bjp candidates for rajya sabha union ministers reelected and the state of their election i have enlisted you can go through them then no sale of f16s to pakistan now finally united states of america realized the nefarious designs of pakistan then FDI inflows raised by 29% in 2015-16 Let us look at the first and the foremost event Narendra Modi government completed 2 years and in this connection under news analysis we discussed about the successes and failures and here i listed out various achievements as enlisted by the central government and i listed out these things only to explain you with regard to various government schemes right first and the foremost is under pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana the government stated more than 21 crore bank accounts were opened and pradhan mantri jan dhan yojana has gone into the guinness book of world records second flagship program of the government pradhan mantri mudra yojana under pradhan mantri mudra yojana 3.48 crore small entrepreneurs were given loans worth 137000 crores of rupees through pradhan mantri mudra yojana and please don't forget in india we have around 5.77 crore informal enterprises or you can say micro enterprises and almost 12 crore people are working in these enterprises the other important aspect as enlisted by the government is because of a direct benefit transfer 31 crore beneficiaries got more than rupees 61000 crore directly into their bank accounts and out of these uh, direct benefit transfer schemes direct benefit transfer for lpg is the one important scheme and as assessed on 15th august 2015 during the independence day address the prime minister stated that all the villages will be electrified within 1000 days as on 15th august 2015 it was assessed more than 18000 villages are to be electrified and the government stated till date more than 7000 villages were electrified and the target date for completion of electrification is the 1st may 2018 then pradhan mantri ujjwal yojana this will provide 5 crore lpg connections to the people below poverty line and this is to be completed within a period of 3 years and during the current year 1.5 crore connections are going to be given by the government the government also stated 1.92 crore toilets were constructed and important aspect is rural sanitation coverage increased from 42% to 52% after this government came to power if you look at the next achievement 2 crore houses for urban poor and 1 crore for rural poor will be constructed as per the government calculations to ensure housing for all by 2022 urban india needs 2 crore houses and rural india needs 4 crore houses but as per the government's statement now by the year 2022 2 crore houses for urban poor and 1 crore houses for rural poor will be constructed the government also came up with ambitious program of 20 world class universities then close to 20 lakh youth across india have trained under pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana if someone talks about pradhan mantri kaushal vikas yojana that is basically for skill development 
government also stated that 1141 new itis with 1.73 lakh seeds have been started and during the last 2 years 100 kilometers per day of rural roads have been constructed and target is to build 2.23 lakh kilometers of rural roads by 2019 to connect every small village in the country then during the year 2015 16 more than 6000 kilometers of national highways have been built if you look at the other achievements work begins on india's first bullet train that is between mumbai and ahmedabad with the shin consent technology of japan japan agreed to give the loan on soft test turns around 80% will be given as loan by japan on soft test turns and the government also stated the country's fastest train which runs at 160 km per hour this is maximum permissible speed this was launched between hazrat nizamuddin and agra the name of the train is gatiman express then all capital cities of northeastern part of the country will be connected by broad gauge by 2020 and the government also stated that during the last 2 years india became the world's fastest growing large economy then india's foreign exchange reserves are at an all time high of 360 billion dollars then in 2015-16 india has received its highest ever fdi inflows into the country then highest ever rank in world bank's ease of doing business rankings india now stands at 130 in ease of doing business rankings and these are the achievements as listed by the government in view of completion of 2 uh, years in power right friends let us move on to next important issue the prime minister's visit to iran and if you look at the snapshot on iran iran is officially known as islamic republic of iran it is also known as persia and it extends from caspian sea to persian gulf to gulf of oman please look into this slide the boundaries of iran one side caspian sea the other side persian gulf it extends up to gulf of oman and iran is one of the world's largest proven oil reserves as well as natural gas reserves and islamic republic with the concept of a supreme leader population is approximately 8 crore currency is rial and capital is tehran and this country is known for islamic revolution of 1979 since 1979 the relations between united states of america west and iran strained a lot and recently sanctions were lifted by united states of america and the west after the historic nuclear deal which is popularly known as p5 plus 1 and Iran is a global leader for Shia Muslim sect at the same time official language is Persian and it supports Shia militias in several countries right and now if you look at a perspective in recent times if you look at Iran in recent times it is now brimming with confidence after historic nuclear deal popularly known as the p5 plus 1 and subsequent lifting of sanctions by the western countries the interesting point here is heads of 15 nations visited iran in 15 weeks there is lot of business opportunity in iran not only that iran is strategically located which links up to central asia and it is strategically located in west asia also then several european countries which are reeling under recession and from low growth rates are now queuing up to seal business deals with iran after the lifting of sanctions it also became a necessity for european countries as several countries are under recession or suffering from low growth rates and all of you are well aware pakistan is one of the close allies of saudi arabia 
and recently president of iran visited pakistan after a gap of 14 years and this has huge significance as pakistan is one of the closest allies of saudi arabia till recent times and sensing the business opportunity the first train with the chinese goods arrived at tehran recently after traveling about 9500 kilometers through kazakhstan and turkmenistan please look into this slide this is the train route of around 9500 kilometers from china to iran which passes through kazakhstan and turkmenistan and in modern times it signals the revival of a silk route and as i have already told you iran is in strategic location to connect the central asia and west asia and will be the key player for one belt one road initiative of china so if you look at india and iran with the past 15 years in perspective even during the times of economic sanctions by the west india maintained reasonably good relations with iran Iran is the one of the largest importers of basmati rice from India for the past few years but the second unfortunate event is a few years ago of course depending on the situation in those days India had voted against Iran at the International Atomic Energy Agency over its clandestine nuclear program then under pressure from United States of America India slashed oil imports from Iran by up to 40% and also backed off from a pipeline project through Pakistan and during the period of sanctions by the west India paid part of the import bill in rupee currency then if you look at chabahar port india showed its intention to develop chabahar port around 13 years ago but could not take off due to several reasons one of the main reasons is the sanctions imposed by the west on iran because of its clandestine nuclear program and the pertinent point here is iran has got the second highest natural gas reserves in the world and india also wants indian firms to develop farzat b gas fields in iran and another important point pertinent here is Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan visited Iran recently and expressed intention to develop various projects in Iran which include setting up of an SCZ and investments to the tune of around 20 billion dollars which is as per the intentions shown by the Petroleum Minister Dharmendra Pradhan so this is in a nutshell India and Iran during the past 15 years right please look into this slide chabahar port this is situated in iran near gulf of oman and gwadar port which is being developed by china is within 100 kilometers distance from chabahar port from this it is very clear from chabahar not only afghanistan but central asia can be accessed very easily and let us come back to the discussion prime minister is in iran The main focus is on Chabahar port. Bilateral agreement was signed between India and Iran which gives India the right to develop and operate two terminals and five berths with the multi-purpose cargo handling capacities in the port of Chabahar for a period of 10 years and this will cost around 500 million dollars and incidentally Atal Bihari Vajpayee visited Iran in 2001 and subsequently Iranian president was the chief guest during Republic Day celebrations of 2003 subsequently this Chabahar port was conceived and because of subsequent sanctions imposed by United States of America and West on Iran this project could not take off so it's a long way from 2003 to 2016 in fact nothing moved during this intervening period because of several reasons then another important aspect is a trilateral agreement was signed by india iran and afghanistan for a trilateral transport and a transit corridor connecting chabahar with afghanistan 
the basic purpose is to connect afghanistan it requires some transport facilities from chabahar port please look into this slide afghanistan is a landlocked so it requires transportation mechanism from chabahar port right into afghanistan so this involves construction of a railway line from chabahar port to connect afghanistan right so trilateral agreement between india iran and afghanistan basically connects afghanistan with the chabahar port right and we discussed in detail in news analysis with regard to this chabahar port and its strategic importance as far as india is concerned please listen to news analysis this week and if you look at other aspects overall 12 agreements or mous were signed when the prime minister visited iran the main contract is on chabahar port as we have already discussed and this was supplemented by a contract between exim bank of india and iran sports and maritime organization with a capital backup of 150 million dollars and the trilateral agreement between india iran and afghanistan will ultimately link with the international north south transport corridor you may ask what is meant by international north south transport corridor please look into this slide this international north south transport corridor will have alternate access skipping red sea suez canal route if one wants to reach russia and adjoining countries then the bilateral agreements signed include setting up of an aluminium plant and laying a railway line to give india access to afghanistan and central asia so this is in a nutshell the visit of prime minister to iran and its strategic significance and all these things please listen to the news analysis part this week look into the next issue bjp candidates for rajya sabha recently elections were held to elect almost one third of the members to rajya sabha here i have listed some union ministers who got elected from various states m venkaiah naidu union minister for urban development elected from rajasthan piyush goyal power minister elected from maharashtra birender singh minister for rural development elected from haryana similarly mukhtar abbas nakvi got elected from jharkhand the railway minister suresh prabhu got elected from andhra pradesh nirmala sitaraman minister for commerce and industry got elected from karnataka and please remember this because sometimes you may be required to answer questions from which state they got elected if you look at the most important event that is uh, no sale of f16s to pakistan in fact some time back united states of america stated that it will sell 8 f16s to pakistan at the subsidized price of 270 million dollars the actual price is 699 million dollars instead of actual price of 699 million dollars pakistan was supposed to pay 270 million dollars but this was reversed by united states of america the issue here is the united states of america congress disallowed subsidizing the sale over concerns that pakistan had not done enough to end the hakani networks terror sanctuaries that means pakistan is aiding and abetting terrorism that's why united states congress disallowed subsidy for the sale of f16s as per the initial agreement pakistan is supposed to get subsidy from foreign military financing program now there will not be any subsidy under foreign military financing program of united states of america 
now pakistan if they want to buy they have to pay full price of 699 million dollars instead of 270 million dollars and pakistan now is not willing to purchase f16s by paying a full price now it appears that the relations between pakistan and the united states of america may strain a bit and pakistan is slowly inching towards china all of you are familiar with 46 billion dollar china pakistan economic corridor please look into this slide this is connecting gwadar port to kashgar in china so this around 3000 kilometers of economic corridor touted to be the game changer for pakistan is ultimately making pakistan to tilt towards china that is one aspect second important point is united states of america of late realized that pakistan is aiding and abetting terrorists the case in point here is taliban chief mulla mansoor was killed in drone attack inside the territory of pakistan now united states of america is moving cautiously with regard to extending financial assistance to pakistan right in future it appears pakistan may move towards china and india may become close ally of united states of america because united states of america also need india so as to promote its interests in indo pacific region right so with this let us leave this topic here let us move on to the next one economy and banking FDI inflows raised by 29% in 2015-16 this foreign direct investments all of you are familiar with the difference between foreign portfolio investment and foreign direct investment foreign portfolio investment is basically investing in stock market of india and foreign portfolio investment is highly volatile it is unstable and at any time it may come and at any time it may go so it will result in asset bubbles and asset crashes but foreign direct investment is more stable it generates employment it aids gdp growth in the countries so foreign direct investment inflows are the highest and if you look at the statistics fdi inflows in india increased by 29% and if you look at equity inflows equity inflows reached 40 billion dollars and if you add all other fdi transactions like reinvested earnings that means earnings of multinational corporations which are reinvested in this country they are around 10 billion dollars other capital is around 4.4 billion dollars and at the same time equity capital of unincorporated bodies is around 1 billion dollars and if you put up all these things the fdi inflows into the country for financial year 2015-16 stands at 55.4 billion dollars and the previous highest fdi inflows to the country was in financial year 2011-12 when the country received 46.55 billion dollars so total fdi inflows into the country if you look at equities alone stands at 40 billion dollars and if you add other contributions like reinvested earnings other capital and equity capital of unincorporated bodies total fdi inflows in financial year 2015 16 are the highest ever at 55.4 billion dollars and you may ask a pertinent question fdi investments in equity what is the bifurcation as i have already told you the fdi inflows in equity stands at 40 billion dollars and sector wise if you look at services occupies the top slot with around 6.88 billion dollars 
followed by computer hardware and software at around 5.90 billion dollars then trading business at 3.84 billion dollars then automobile industry at 2.52 billion dollars so services occupied the top slot at 6.88 billion dollars and you may ask another pertinent question country wise if you look at country wise inflows singapore stands at 13.69 billion dollars followed by mauritius at around 8 billion dollars and united states of america is in third position at 4 billion dollars and please don't forget recently india and mauritius amended protocol of double taxation avoidance agreement because the inflows from mauritius are somewhat suspicious and people feel that they are a part of a round tripping of a black money at least part of the investments coming from mauritius are due to round tripping of a black money so to avoid the treaty abuse recently india and mauritius amended the protocol of double taxation avoidance agreement right friends with this let us conclude the lecture part please do join for snt and other modules and please do join for news analysis we deliberated in detail on chabahar port agreement and its significance right friends have a nice day thank you